Otter Creek had one of the craziest town hall meetings ever where they voted to spend all kinds of money they don't have. And people have questions about this. And the biggest question, why is their council member hiding their face the entire time? Joyce Widler wants to know, why did Gail keep her head turned towards the wall? Did Russ the Sus have a bad case of halitosis? Um, could it be the cameras? Everything is going to be speculation. We don't know. I did talk to Gail afterwards, but we talked about Christmas in the Creek, which is going to be phenomenal. And Gail's going to be helping us go to a toy store and get a ton of toys. And Gail has the day off for the event as well, which is going to be phenomenal too. So you can speculate as much as you want. I get it. Most of you are going, okay, well, she didn't want to be noticed, but that's what made her noticeable. And it could have been an issue with Russ. It could have been an issue of, I don't want to be on cameras. It could have just been an issue of, I'm having a bad hair day. There's potential she was actually trying to cup her ear so she could hear better as well. She did a great job participating in the meeting, and that's what counts. Jody's got a pretty good question. She says, I know this question is not in regards to the meeting per se, but I'm going to ask it here anyway. The info needed by the state to run for a seat is quite extensive. Yes, it's changing drastically. What happens if there's not enough people running for the council seat? Well, that's an incredible question. So I can share with you right now with the changes that are being made. So people have said, Jeremy, why don't you run for council? And we've always shared, well, we're not full-time residents. We're part-time residents, even though we do spend more time in Otter Creek and we could change our residency very easily. But with all the information they want now, all the financials, uh, I would never, ever, ever seek that position. Nobody needs to know all my financial information. And frankly, nobody needs to know all your financial information. I understand the reason for the change. I mean, sunshine laws, right? You're supposed to be able to see everything that's happening with your public servants. You're supposed to know everything that's happened and is happening with your public servants. And if you truly want to be a public servant, you're going to willingly give all that financial information and the world is going to see it. The world is going to know it. Now, the other question is, is how many people in a small town like Otter Creek will be able to understand that to get online and to fill all that information out. It's not a paper write in. This is my name. This is my address. This is literally your life in financial statements online now. So here's what I think. For a lot of small towns, such as in Otter Creek, they're going to disappear. Now, a town doesn't disappear. Town councils disappear. So if they don't have enough people running, what happens? I assume the state comes in and shuts them down or there was another town nearby. They couldn't get enough people to actually run. And what did they do? They put it on the ballot to unincorporate. And guess what? They're still doing fine today. Just nobody wanted to go to those town hall meetings. Rackison Forever wants to know, uh, did he pay up on that bet? <sighs> Rudolph, you know who he's talking about, right? He's talking about Don the Con and the whole bet about the water. With everything that was going on in the meeting, honestly, I forgot to even bring that bet up and the $50. So I can share with you that Don did not give me $50 based on the water bet. If you don't remember the bet, here's another look at it. I'll bet you $50 it'll pass any, any test you put it through. Eller Torres wants to know, hey, what the hails? How come no one's in jail yet? Well, Eller... It's not like we can just go knock on Russ the Sus's door and go, hey, um, you just did a corrupt action taking $7,500 without anybody's approval from a fund that you can't take it from and you spent it and didn't tell anybody about it. You're going to jail. We can't do that, nor can you. So there's a process through all of that. I mean, that's one of the beauties of living in the United States of America, right? There is a legal process. Now, most of the time, that legal process works. Sometimes that legal process fails. But it is in the process. The state has all the information. It is a long process, but I do believe at the end of it, it will be the right process. In other words, consequences that are appropriate will follow. The Mimi of Seven says, 
Why did Don and Russ change seats? And why did Gail keep her head turned towards the window during the meeting? All right, we already covered that second one. We're just going to go with the changing of seats, okay? Uh, I don't know about you guys. I, I like changing seats up a little bit. Sometimes I'm over there in the beanbag. Sometimes I'm over here in the lazy boy. Uh, I think the aspect truly is, though, for safety. If you recall in last month's meeting, and you can go to our playlist, Odd Dirt Creek, it's in the playlist tab on the channel, you'll see within the first few minutes, uh, Russell was being extremely disrespectful to Belinda. And I think those changes were made positively to, to pr protect Belinda and, and potentially even protect Russell from himself. Now, that may have caused the issue in the secondary question, because now you have Russell sitting next to somebody else, and somebody else is doing this, and frankly, they may not want to be near that person. Again, I can't claim to have any knowledge on this. It's only speculation, and speculation probably isn't going to be that helpful in this situation. But I do believe overall it was for protection of Belinda and protection of Russell. Luann wants to know, why didn't anybody ask who signed the check for the survey? I think Luann is referring to the study. And I think she's referring to the $7,500 that Russell spent without any permission. That's the only thing I can come up with thinking about this past meeting. And she's asking, who signed that check? Well, from my understanding, that information wasn't given. My understanding was it must have been Russell. We did hear in the meeting that Russell met with another individual multiple times about this and that Russell had all the information and he was the only one that knew the information. So I'm going to guess Russell or maybe Russell had Mary cut the check. So right now, Mary, I know, had authority to write a check. I don't know if the mayor, if Russell actually had authority to write the check. And if there's two people involved in that check, that's collusion. RV there yet wants to know, Jeremy, why isn't Don the Khan, why didn't he demand all this stuff from Russ the Sus? Why is he always crying about the things that he never had before? Well, that's the ironic part about this. Because if you go back through our playlist and you go through the Otter Creek all the videos, you'll see that Don was asking and always complaining about everything as well. Now, Russell never gave him anything. Madam Mayor Teresa is giving everything. Kind of like what the Hales fans, look at all this here. This is a mountain. This is one day's worth of mail for Christmas in the Creek. Oh, man, your guys' generosity is absolutely it's amazing, amazing. And Madam Mayor Therese has been very generous with all information, complete and total transparency. She's trying to make sure that everybody has everything they can to make the wise decisions. Don is now, wait, hold a second, let's back up. Do you remember when we showed some of the 6,000 emails and Mary Mary was writing Attorney Worm saying, uh-oh, Don found out we had a secret meeting. What do we do? They had an illegal secret meeting. Mary, Russell, and Don comes in. She tried to lock him out. They were at odds like this, nonstop at odds like this. How weird that now Don and Russ are like this. What in the world? <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't get it. What in the world has brought these two mortal enemies together? Is it what the hails? Is it Madam Mayor Therese? I mean, I didn't think any of us had that kind of effect on people, but something has taken these enemies and they said, you know what? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mr. John wants to know, why does Town Hall have all the bookcases and the books and the TVs, etc., gone? So... Mr. John, one of the things they walked into, that new administration, they walked into a mess, a complete and total mess, and they've tried to clean it up. And part of cleaning up that mess is actually trying to decrease expenses and increase income. It's the only way you're going to be viable as a town, as a business. Personally, you have to, in your own life, you have to increase your income, decrease your expenses, or you're going to go broke, you're going to go bankrupt. So those old TVs, they're garbage. Nobody uses those anymore. As a matter of fact, even in a town like Otter Creek, 
I'd be willing to bet Don $50 that there isn't a single tube TV in any of these homes in Otter Creek. I bet they all have flat screens. So those are garbage. Now, the, the, the books. The books were donated to the individuals in the town and other individuals that could use them. Uh, there was talk of jail. There was talk of a, a, a multiple different areas where people could use those books because nobody was coming into the Otter Creek Town Hall to read books. Nobody. So they were just sitting there getting pooped on by... We have, we have a major lizard thing going on here in Florida. And we also have palmetto bugs. And they leave these little... They look like mouse turds, but they're not. They're lizards and they're palmetto bugs. And they get in everywhere in every building. They're, all those books were being destroyed by the bugs and by the lizards. And there was nobody taking care of them. We don't have a paid librarian. And so now they're in the hands of people that are actually going to take care of them. Now, it's a great thing that the town of Otter Creek came together to build that library, but nobody used it. So that's been removed. And then all of the shelves have been removed because it became an issue with space, even getting people in there during a town hall meeting. And you and I both know it wasn't because the townspeople were showing up. It's because outsiders were showing up. It's very difficult for me to admit this, but the reality is people who don't, they don't live in Otter Creek. They care more about Otter Creek than those who do. Silver Auntie wants to know, so did Russ the Sus say he'd play the Grinch? I think green is really his color. Um, that might be the color he's usually... No, he's usually wearing denim, right? Is denim it, or beige. Yeah, it's usually denim. Or is it light tan? Mm. I mean, it could be in there. Um, he smirked. Usually, when I'm at a town hall meeting, all that happens is his face gets redder and redder and redder. Oh, he started shuffling through paperwork. Like well, he he'll reading. start shuffling, pretending he can read, and, and he just gets so mad. Jeremy Hales is here. I almost saw, I almost saw the corner of his, of his lips go up and smile. So even Russ the Sus found the humor in it. He has not given us an answer yet. Now the follow-up question is, well, Jeremy, if he actually said he would do it, would you let him? Well, you're going to have to wait to watch the Christmas in the Creek video. What are the ages of the kids in Otter Creek? Susan wants to know. Well, I can tell you that... George is 41, okay? And she's out of control. So George is 41. This isn't even your big stocking, is it? It's one of my many big stockings. No, Shout I've out got, to our fan who made that. Uh, I've got... And yours is hanging up on the wall. Giant, giant stocking coming for you. So let's think about the age of the kids in Otter Creek. I know of a 16-year-old across the street. So there's a teenager I know of... Another teenager around town hall. So there's two teens. Carl, Carl's, he's got teens, She's right? He's a teenager. Okay, so three teens. So mostly you're thinking, you're thinking, well, Jeremy, those are teens. Those aren't kids. Hey, those are kids, and we're not going to turn them away for gifts. We're not going to have any age limit on, on the kids coming for gifts. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, I'm 97. I'm coming to sit on Santa's lap. I want some gifts. Uh, I do think... So Darlene's grandson is is probably four or five. Yeah, he's probably preschool, kindergarten. In that age as well. Um, you've got you've got Mimi's nephew who is preteen, teen, mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. in there. So we got one to the, that's that's five we're thinking of already, and that's not even including you, George. What about the chickens? The chickens are a year and a half old. Are we going to count the chickens? No. No. Okay. No chickens. No. No. <clears throat> no. We're counting humans. Okay. Humans only in Otter Creek. Turtles? Dad wants to know if we still love turtles. Well, you'd have to look at our Charlie Brown Christmas tree. It says, I love turtles. Used to. No, that's not what Chad actually asked. He said, how can anyone not call them out during public comments? Someone needs to call them out on this BS. Well, Chad, I think there were people calling them out. As a matter of fact, there were people in the crowd going, you just bankrupt the town. There was public comments saying, I just think you made some of the most bad decisions. And and you, you know, it's hard to hold your tongue. You know, proper, 
proper rules in this type of situation is to wait for your three minutes. But when you see your council members make a horrific decision that is going to impact the residents, and we are residents, but going to impact all the residents in a negative way, such as spending upwards of $75,000 in a general budget that they're lucky to bring in close to 60. So they just added 75 on top of that. If you go, well, they already had a budget for an attorney. They had attorney worm. They were paying attorney worm $150 an hour. And I get it. He was, he was screwing them over and Mary was screwing them over and all they were doing was gossiping and they weren't doing official business. But now they're paying $27,000 a year for legal representation, whether they need it or not, which we both know they absolutely need it. So there were individuals actually calling them out and you even had your mayor, the leader going and, and I think... At one point, somebody said, you just bankrupt this entire town. And she went, yep. If you go back, you watch the video. Even the Madam Mayor is trying to call out the council members as this is happening. In a very respectful and polite way. Neil Block wants to know, Jeremy, what happened to the office that uh, George gave you? You mean Diana Nana's <laughs> office? Um, this is a pretty nice office you got here, Diana. I got kicked out, so AC went out in the full building, and this wall unit pumps out AC like nobody's business. So Deanna moved in, and uh, I got booted out. So I'm just a visitor right now. I'm a guest. This is the official eBay room. This is the official eBay room right now. But Gail really wants to know, I wonder if he met with Belinda, like she offered at the last meeting, meaning Don the Con. Belinda told Don, you can come in, I'll show you anything, I'll go through everything with you. And she showed him how to get all the attachments. Okay, so Gail, here's what I have heard. <clears throat> Take it for what it's worth, okay? I heard that Don the Con actually did go to the town hall and met with Belinda and got his packet. I also heard, and again, you're hearing this third, fourth party right now, that it was offered. So I want to be very clear. The clerk, Belinda, did not tell this to me, and neither did Madam Mayor or any other council members, okay? And so you can understand that this, the venue where this actually came from. And so I also heard that it was offered to him to go through all the financials, and Don said no. Now, if this is true, isn't this just a show, a, a dog and pony show that he's putting on during the actual board meeting, during the town hall council meeting? He had the opportunity. He's asking for all this stuff. Belinda offered it to him as he came in. Again, you're getting this third, fourth party, fifth party from me. Um, he showed, picks up his packet, is offered all the financial information and to go through everything that he's been asking for. He turns it down and then makes a big hullababoob uh, during the meeting. I got a problem with that if that's completely and totally true. Next question is for me. For you? Me. From Sydney. They're asking you questions? Yeah, Sydney wants to know, hey, George, do you stay warm? Not cold since you're in Florida. I hope you are warm. There's been up and down days, you know, living life without a thyroid. My body is always cold. So right now I'm wearing a hoodie. Um, today was probably what? Mid 60s, 60s, rain all day. Rain and gloomy. There were some days where it was 80 and beautiful, but the office remained cool. So I wore a hoodie. I sweat like crazy so... all day. It was horrific. George is wearing hoodies. <laughs> I'll take this rain, gloomy weather over cold snow any day. Bruce wants to know, are we going to give Christmas gifts to the two biggest children in Otter Creek? I don't know if he's referring to me and you, George, or to Russ the Sus and Don the Con. Now, I'm assuming he's going for Russ the Sus and Don the Con. Um, I don't think, first of all, that Russ the Sus or Don the Con will be on the property. Remember, this is not a town hall 
uh, initiated or town hall sponsored or town hall. You know, there are people who go, well, this is town, this, you can't do that. We can do whatever we want. We're hosting it on our private property. This is a private function that we're opening up to the public. And there are some of the public that probably aren't going to arrive, such as Russ the Sus, Don the Con. And there are those that can't legally show up. And that's their consequences for their actions. Uh, if we were to get them something for Christmas, I'd get Don hearing aids and I would get Russ uh, head and shoulder shampoo or tick and flea remover. That's what I think they both need for Christmas. Keep in mind, this party has been hosted at Town Hall in the past and they never showed up then either. So what is the likelihood of them showing up now? User, lots of letters and lots of numbers says, I'm sure you're not going to see this post. Ha! Gotcha! Saw it. Uh, but with all the love and the toy donations, if there's a three gift recommendation, what will you do with any extra toys? What a wonderful problem to have. Well, I think the first thing we can do is we can store. If you haven't seen yet, we've got about 10,000 square feet building here. And so we'll be able to store for the next party next year. Now, when I invited Levy County Sheriff to be a part of this as well, which they will be here, uh, it's going to be in the aspect of a touch a truck. And, and if you're not familiar with that, emergency vehicles will come in. Kids get to meet the officers, get to see the vehicles, you know, touch the vehicles. The lights and sirens. They, will as be light, on. Play with lights and sirens and all that. And it's a great community thing because kids learn that you don't have to be afraid of the sheriff. Uh, the sheriff are there to protect you and to help you. And so that's a, that's a very positive thing. So I, when I was talking to them, they're involved with Toys for Tots. And one of their PR people there at the sheriff's station was going to get me in contact with a person who runs all the Toys for Tots here in Levy County. So that may be a viable option as well. We won't know exactly what we're doing until we see where we're at. I do think we are, if, if we have overflow, okay, and there's, there's potential that could happen, I think the first thing we need to do is go find more kids. I mean, literally, we could go find more kids and say, come on in. We got free presents. Santa's here. Rick wants to know, why didn't anyone speak up plainly and point out that the town is broke? The current spending is going to immediately use up any surplus and put the situation into plain terms to everybody. I, I did. Brick, come on, I did. Listen, there are a lot of people there that won't listen to me. They go, oh, Jeremy, this, Jeremy, that. And there are a lot of people there that will listen to me and go, Jeremy actually understands. Jeremy knows. And there's a lot of things I do understand, and there's a whole lot more things in life I don't understand. But what I do understand is when the auditor is giving the report, or the CPA is giving the audit report for 2022, I do understand that there's only a surplus of liquid cash of $33,000. Now, coming into 2023, I also understand that they have given raises, much needed. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that. They should be doing that. Uh, and I also understand that there is increased expenses, but to increase expenses by almost $75,000 for a community that's lucky to generate $60,000, uh, it blows my mind. But you heard others. You did. You heard others. And I've emphasized this already. Even your own mayor, people who actually understand the math, are going, I, I, I don't know what just happened. I literally don't know what just happened. And at this point, I left thinking, George, should we even try and help these people anymore? If they're going to continue to put themselves in helpless and hopeless situations, maybe we shouldn't even go to the meetings. Maybe we shouldn't try and speak some wisdom or a little bit of expertise in areas that we have a little bit in. Beaker wants to know, why is Creepy Don smiling constantly? Maybe he's just a really happy guy, or no, he's not, because even though he's smiling, he's always complaining. Um, I got a feeling it's the recreational use of some certain substances. Could be gas, or maybe it's one of his weird quirks. Like, one of the things that I do that I know I do, but I don't realize I'm doing it when, I, when I'm doing it. When I'm really concentrating and I'm working, I do this weird thing with, I squeeze my lips together like. 
Now, George will call me out on it. George does the opposite thing. When she's really concentrating and working, she does this with her lips. Oh, the duck lips come out. We all have weird quirks, so the smiling could be so, Don's weird quirk. Opposites attract. I pull my lips in and go, mm -hmm. for some weird reason, I don't know why. George sticks hers out for some <laughs> weird reason, I don't know why. Maybe Don just does this. Maybe. <laughs> smiling is my favorite. Kimberly wants to know, did anybody else hear this will bankrupt the town? Kimberly, I promise you, everybody in that room heard that, okay? So when we're filming, we're using just a phone, okay? And microphones are down here. And typically, they're directional. So what you hear, what we capture on a video, and where people go, Jeremy, you're really loud. I have to be. We don't use microphones. I have to push my voice to the phone so that it actually sounds to the right level with you. So right now, you're hearing me at the right level, but George is hearing me in person much, much louder. In person, it's much, much louder. When you view it, it mellows down because again, the microphones. Everybody in the room heard this is gonna bankrupt the town, but the people who voted for it, obviously, they didn't care. I guess we're gonna see what happens. Or it could be that that was the actual intent. Maybe somebody is voting for it. Maybe those are voting for it because they literally want to bankrupt the town to go, you know what? If I can't be in charge, nobody will be in charge. Of course, there's a better way to do that. It would be to unincorporate, but you can't unincorporate if you're bankrupt. I don't know what's gonna happen to this tiny town, but I'm starting to lose hope myself. A B et has a question. A B et. A B et. Uh, wow. Oh, before we get to the question, look at all these bikes that have been donated. Wow. They That's even incredible. have bows on them. And little bells. There's some new in the box. That's pretty cool. I've got uh, I got our bear here. Goldie or Blondie? Uh, what are we? I think it's Blondie. Is it Blondie? Yeah. Deanna, Deanna named, named it. Named the bear Blondie. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Okay. That's fine. Uh, how about barbecue soda? Okay. You want to do barbecue? Deal. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, AB says, wow, Mr. Fuller isn't there, but ca by the way, if you, if you want to send more bikes, feel free. I don't think the kids are going to complain about getting a new bike for Christmas. <laughs> uh, we're just, we're tickled. We're thrilled. Um, the toy store that we're going to just reached out to us this morning. We solidified everything with the district manager and November 27th at 8 a.m. We're buying everything we possibly can it's going to be exciting we got to get blondie some uh some, some winter gear decorative okay festive outfits we'll, we'll work on it and we have an entire team going and um most of them are here in otter creek it's going to be so much fun wow mr fuller isn't there but he's kind of is via this fellow who's interested in one thing but can't be bothered to remember anyone's name you forgot Deanna's name. Uh, anyone, or Belinda's name as well. Let's just keep going on. Da 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 da. Uh, one place of it. Um, uh, one has to wonder why is this man so obsessed, obsessed with what Zim does on his land? Seems to be a petty thing, and the strong family are just jealous or something. Listen, I don't understand the whole feud, okay? Now, what I do understand is my feuds. So I have a feud with the town, Russell and Mary, particularly. Theft. Okay, so this is all blown up from a two inch pipe. Uh, I understand being stalked um, and my life threatened and being called racial slurs and things along those lines from two individuals who legally must be at all times, even if they're in the street, particularly if they're in the street, the law says they must remove themselves. They must remove themselves which normal people would never put themselves in the middle of the street because they know there's a civil protection order that has to be 500 feet away. I understand my issues. I don't understand this underlying Zim versus the Strongs. Um, property issues, but from my understanding, Zim's offered to pay a premium on that little tiny piece of property. Why haven't the Strongs received it or accepted it? That I don't know either. The other thing that I've heard, and again, it's it's skepticism, but uh, Russell's putting it up to him. But but really, does Russell have that kind of power over a local family, an entire family? I look at this man and I go, you have no power whatsoever. You think you have power because you turned people's water on and off. That's not power. That's an abuse of the position of mayor in the town and what he did with that position. I don't get it. 
I don't understand it. Maybe someday I will, but as of right now, I don't get the feud over this little tiny triangle of property either. Susan wants to know, Jeremy, can't the old schoolhouse be used as a community center? And the answer is no. And I've answered this question over and over and over again. And I realize the way YouTube works, not everybody sees every single video. And at the same time, there are people who go, well, Jeremy repeated himself. He said that in the last video. Well, the way YouTube works is YouTube shows the video to millions of more people and millions of people are coming in and millions of people haven't seen anything. So to answer that question, number one, the grant can be used for only two things. No matter who types another question, can it be used for? The answer is no can be used for two things, sidewalks or a community center, and it has to be a new build. Now, they cannot use this facility for a community center. Why? Well, number one, it's got to be a new build. Number two, it's privately owned. I own it. It's not community owned like a town hall. This is a private ownership. This could never be a community center unless I donated it to town, which I will not be doing. I have plans for this for another nonprofit organization once I pass away. This is not going to the town. It is not a community center. It doesn't mean that I can't host and invite people in, such as with Christmas in the Creek. And it could be shelter as it was during the hurricane. Uh, we can do lots of things. We have friends over here all the time. We have pizza, we laugh, we, we've played games, you name it. But to the definition of a community civic center, community center, that's got to be town owned, which means everybody has ownership and reality, nobody has ownership because nobody owns a town. And once it's dissolved, those assets have to go somewhere else into a like-minded, I guess you could say it could go to the county or it has to be auctioned off and then that money probably flows into the county. I'm not sure in this aspect what would happen, but this schoolhouse cannot be used. Now, if they attempted to purchase it before I actually purchased it, which everybody had the exact amount of time, I mean, we didn't even know it was for sale. Had no clue until we heard that the church needed help. We offered the church the help. They denied the help that we wanted. Then they cried that we bought it. When the owners said, hey, the church is screwing us over. They won't pull the trigger. We've got to take care of our clients. We need the money. And I said, hey, you guarantee me 100% you're not under contract with the church. And they did. They even gave the church this much time. And I told George, that pastor will be calling us. And he never, ever called. Now they cry that we own it. So could it really be used? I mean, you could ask the same question. Can't the church be used as a community center? Christine Roman Noodles says, what? John Crook pulled out a pew pew on someone in the community. Christine, here's what happened, okay? We weren't here, it was after a town hall meeting. Apparently things got pretty heated. Now, remember we weren't here because it was flip flop on the seasons and there were witnesses. And so you're going, okay, well, this had to have been reported and he had to go to jail, right? Well, it was reported, but it was not recorded. So if there's no proof of it actually happening and you're reporting it, that comes to a point of going, well, that's hearsay. But there are still witnesses that saw it, credible witnesses, one particularly who reported to the Levy County Sheriff. You know the crook lies to the police. He learned that from Lynette. Remember when he pulled out a firearm on me and then he told the sheriff, I didn't really even have one. And he goes, uh, John, I already saw the video. Oh. The Mox DJ says, can you not find a temporary home for Town Hall? Then knock Town Hall down, rebuild on that land so you have a new Town Hall building with primary use of a community center. Uh, I actually think that's a pretty smart idea. I'm sure they could meet, uh, I mean, potentially they could ask the church if they could meet there. Um, you could not, I know your next thought is, well, can't they meet at the schoolhouse? The answer is no, because it's a, well, actually they probably could. See, I was going to say no because there's civil protection orders on two residents, but those those residents can't go to the town hall meetings anyway because I'm there. So it wouldn't matter if it was here or there. 
But at the same time, I feel like the church may be more neutral. Of course, now you're thinking, okay, well, what about those who don't want to go to a church and they're anti-church? Okay. Um, I guess we could do this with every location. We could pick a location and go, well, people won't come because of this. Pick a location. People won't come because of this. Reality is people aren't coming as it is anyway, right? So I think there is some wisdom in, in what you're saying. Can you just knock the old building down? And it just got brand new air conditioning, very expensive air conditioning. Can we salvage that and save it? And can we build a brand new building? I mean, I, you might be onto something, but you have to understand the grant, the people who understand the grant, the grant writers and, and things along those lines, they're the ones that are going to know all the rules and regulations. There are a ton of things you can't do with the grant and only two things you can do with the grant. Storage in the Love says, why can't the town use the old firehouse building next to town hall? Uh, the town can enlarge the firehouse use as a community center, restoraging the love. Minister JR, CEO, Square One Philly. Um, that's another good idea. So they do have another facility over there. Again, it's going to come down to the aspects of what they can do and can't do with the grants. Remember, that grant is very, very specific. Very specific. It is very limited. And it's being said that it's very limited, you also have to understand that it's going to cost a ton of money to upkeep. So you already know they're going, oh, well, we got $900,000. So we got to build a $900,000 building uh, for a town of 100 people and the population keeps going down. That does not seem feasible or smart. So why would you try and use all 900000 to build this building? You can't withhold any of the money for, to pay for operating costs. I've already asked that question, uh, and we got the response for that. Why not build an adequate building, and what if that building only costs $250,000? Now, I also know that um, they're going to try and use it all, right? But what if, I'm just saying, what if you build a building for $250,000? that you maybe could maintain as a small community and afford, which I really don't think they can anyway. Why, why, why do you think it's free money? It's not, it's not free money. Anything you build is gonna have a cost associated with it. So town hall, firehouse, park, I don't know what's gonna happen. And frankly, I have, no say in it whatsoever. Shelly says, so uh, Don's standing up for Russ again? Imagine that. I don't know what's going on between those two, but something definitely is. I don't understand. You know, Don goes, Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, it's not, it's not appropriate. It's wrong to allow him to speak like that. No, it's not. It's 100% legally right. The Supreme Court has upheld your right to be able to say anything you want about your civil leaders. They cannot restrict, even though the town of Otter Creek is saying, please refrain from using foul language. Please direct this. They legally cannot withhold you to those boundaries. Now, they can say public comments is three minutes, and they can tell you when that three minutes is up. And frankly, that's what they should be doing to keep them out of any legal liabilities. Because if they continue that route, they're going to find themselves in another legal issue, another legal issue, and another legal issue. And that's not good for a town to be that way. Which, again, emphasizes my point unincorporate. You shouldn't be a town. You don't know how to run a town. You don't know what the laws are. You keep breaking them. You ever broke a candy cane in your mouth, George? Mm -hmm. Or did you used to suck it until it got like really sharp? Did you ever get like the really sharp end? Yes. This is I did it all as a kid. All candy canes back here. My favorite was to just break them and then chop on them like crazy. User lots of letters and lots of numbers says, can the town go solar? I'm sure anybody can go solar. Uh, even George and I looked at going solar at Hale's headquarters, except the expense was well more than we would ever save. So it made no sense whatsoever for us to go solar. So you have to also understand, for us to go solar at Hale's headquarters, we were going to have to invest almost $200,000 into going solar. We would never, ever see the return on that investment at Hale's headquarters. Uh, for a town to now go, okay... We're going to invest $200,000. That was for personal property. Uh, for the town to go solar, 
Okay, number one, you have to acquire property, which they don't have. You go, well, they'll buy it. They'll get a grant. Okay, you get a grant. Who's got the property? You know who has property in town that would a solar farm could go on? I can think of one person. You know who that is, George? They have 70 acres. It would have to be cleared. It'd have to be a solar farm. Do you know who that is in town with 70 acres? Bruce? Uh, yes. The guy with the middle name of Bruce. Bruce and Margaret. Bruce and Margaret. They've got 70 acres. And last I checked, it is not for sale. So can a town go solar? I'm sure there are towns that can go solar, but they can't do it if they don't have money and they can't do it if land isn't for sale. Karate mom, what the hails? She didn't say hails. What the hails does he mean, meaning Don, the public cannot talk down to board members. Council members are just townspeople. The townspeople do not have to like or agree with the members and they have every right to speak their mind, their beliefs, and their feelings. Karate Mom, you just gave Don the Hwah! karate chop. Juliet wants to know, why doesn't anybody in that town want to build and make the town better? The only answer I have heard is they're scared if there's any improvements that their taxes will go up. And that doesn't make any sense to me because improvements at your neighbors isn't going to drive taxes up at your place. So this used to be a booming town. It was the central place. It was the center of Levy County. And then business went away. And then people went away. And families went away. So all of that good left what was remaining. And there are still incredible people here. I don't know why they're afraid to build. I don't know why they're afraid of change. Maybe us acquiring the schoolhouse will help that fear and the restoration of the schoolhouse help that fear of change, you know, kind of die down a little bit. But building and growth, uh, it, the only opposite to that is, is death. And this town can't survive without growth. Brian says, Jeremy... This might sound bad to some, but why don't you just bankrupt the town? Brian, let's be honest. You saw the videos. Do you really think the town needs any help from me to bankrupt? They're on that route already. 